today's topic is reaction force of radiation abraham lorentz equation of motion we know that accelerated charge particle emits electromagnetic radiation if we neglect the emission of radiation external force acting on the charge particle of charge e and mass m is given by newton's equation of motion that is m v dot equal to f e x t f e x t is external force m is the mass of charge particle and v dot is dv upon dt that is acceleration this is newton's equation of motion mass into acceleration equal to force and force is external force which we write as f e x t accelerated charge particle emits radiation at a rate given by larmor formula this is formula for power power represent energy emitted per unit time so this is the rate of emitted radiation larmor formula is power p equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 2 by 3 e square upon c cube v dot square so this power or, or rate of energy emitted is proportional to v dot square v dot is acceleration so it is it is power is proportional to the square of the acceleration of charge particle and it is also proportional to e square square of its charge other terms are constants to account for this radiative energy loss and its effect on the motion of charge particle we modify equation 1 by adding a radiative reaction force f r a d r a d is for radiation so in equation 1 we add a term in right hand side with external force we add another term of force and that is radiation force f r a d so that the equation of motion is now m v dot equal to f external plus f radiation radiative reaction force f r a d must be such that it should be vanish if charge particle is not accelerated that is when v dot is zero since then there is no radiation radiative reaction force f r a d it must vanish when acceleration v dot is zero because when v dot is zero acceleration is zero this power becomes zero power is the radiative energy loss per unit time so if a dot v dot is zero acceleration of charge particle is zero then it will not emit any radiation and second is it should be proportional to e square since radiated power is proportional to e square also it should not be affected by the sign of charge particle charge particle may be positively charged or negatively charged and third is it should involve characteristic time tau so we see that radiative reaction force f r a d must be such that it follows these three conditions 
Now to determine the form of radiative reaction force FRAD, we consider the work done by this force on the particle in the time interval T1 to T2 and it should be equal to the negative of the energy radiated in that time interval. This condition gives the following relation. Integral T1 to T2 F radiative dot V dt equal to minus integral T1 to T2 Pt dt. Left hand side is equal to work done by the by this radiative reaction force F R A D. Formula for work done is force into displacement. So for force we have F R A D radiative reaction force F dot dx and after dot we must have dx displacement and displacement is V dt. If V is velocity dt is time interval then V is dx upon dt so dx is V dt. We write displacement in terms of velocity V. This is the work done by radiative reaction force and it must be equal to the negative of energy radiated. So this is the minus sign because we want to write negative of energy radiated and power is equal to radiated energy per unit time. So radiated energy in time interval dt will be P dt and we integrate it over this time interval time from T1 to T2. So this is the equation which is obtained such that in left hand side we have the work done by radiative reaction force and in right hand side we have negative of the energy emitted, energy radiated. Now we substitute the value of P from this relation that is Larmor formula P which is function of time t is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 2 by 3 e square upon c cube v dot square. Substituting this value of pt we have in right hand side equal to minus integral t1 to t2 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 2 by 3 e square upon c cube v dot square dt. Now we write v dot square as v dot vector dot v dot vector and now we integrate this integral in right hand side by taking v dot as first function and second v dot as second function. There are two v dot v dot dot v dot first v dot we consider is a first function and second v dot we consider it as second function and integrating by parts and using the formula of integral of two functions that is first function integral of second minus integral differentiation of first and integral of second. So first function integral of second gives this first term and then minus integral differentiation of first and integral of second gives this second term. First function is V dot integral of second yani integral of v dot is v. 
So we have this first term minus 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 2 by 3 e square upon c cube v dot dot v and then minus integral differentiation of first differentiation of first gives v double dot and integral of second second is v dot and its integral gives v so we have the term v double dot dot v with these constants 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 2 by 3 e square upon c cube so integrating by parts we have these two terms in first term we must use the limit from t1 to t2 now if we consider the motion as periodic or such that v dot dot v equal to 0 v dot dot v equal to 0 means directions of velocity and acceleration are perpendicular at t equal to t1 and t equal to t2 and we put the limits in first term then first term becomes 0 first term becomes 0 because v dot dot v is 0 at these two times t equal to t1 and t equal to t2 and this is the limit of this first term t1 to t2 so first term when it says becomes 0 only second term remains and we have the equation as integral t1 to t2 f r a d dot v dt equal to integral t1 to t2 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 2 by 3 e square upon c cube v double dot dot v dt bring right hand side into left hand side integral and v dt dot v dt is common remaining terms are f radiative minus 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 2 by 3 e square upon c cube v double dot we have taken integral as common and dot v dt is common in right hand side now the quantity inside the bracket must vanish as which gives formula for radiative reaction force of f r a d that is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 2 by 3 e square upon c cube v double dot so radiative reaction force f r a d is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 2 by 3 e square upon c cube v double dot and we write is it as m tau v double dot so the terms the term with v double dot that is 2 e square upon 4 pi epsilon 0 into 3 c cube we write it as m tau so that tau is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 2 by 3 e square upon m c cube and this term tau is known as characteristic time it must have dimensions of time substituting the value of f r a d from equation 5 in equation 3 we get the modified equation of motion as f radiative is now m tau v double dot and this value of f r a d is put in this equation m v dot equal to f e x t plus f r a d now this equation becomes m v dot equal to f external plus m tau v double dot bring the term m tau v double dot to the left hand side and take 
m common then we have m into v dot minus tau v double dot equal to f external and this equation is known as abraham lorenz equation of motion it includes in some approximate and time average wave the radiative effects of the emission of radiation there are some drawbacks of this equation this equation is criticized on the ground that it is second order in time rather than first and therefore runs counters to the well known requirements for a dynamical equation of motion this equation is second order in time in the equation of motion newton's equation of motion we only have m v dot equal to f e x t where v dot is differentiation of velocity with time that is acceleration dv upon dt but this equation consists differentiation with respect to t two times because it contains the term v double dot that is d2 v upon dt square so it is second order in time if the external force is zero if we put f e x t equal to zero it is obvious that equation 7 has two possible solutions see this equation if f external external force is zero right hand side is zero then left hand side will also be zero and we have v dot minus tau v double dot equal to zero or v dot equal to tau v double dot if we solve this equation we have two solutions first one is v dot equal to zero and second one is v dot equal to a e to the power t upon tau v dot equal to zero is obvious as v dot is zero then v double dot will also be zero and the second solution we can find out very easily put v dot equal to x then v dot v double dot becomes dx upon dt and we have relation x equal to tau dx upon dt and by integrating it we can find this solution v dot equal to a e to the power t upon tau here a is acceleration at t equal to 0 if we put t equal to 0 e to the power t upon tau becomes 1 and v dot that is acceleration becomes a so a is acceleration at t equal to 0 only the first solution is reasonable and the second solution is unacceptable since v dot dot v is not equal to 0 at t equal to t1 and t equal to t2 v this is also required we have used this relation v dot dot v is equal to 0 it must be equal to 0 at these two times t equal to t1 and t equal to t2 so this second solution is unacceptable only the solution remains is that v dot t equal to 0 it is clear that the equation is satisfied only in the domain where the radiative reaction term is a small correction then the radiative reaction can be treated as a perturbation producing slow or small changes on the motion of the particle